Hey there, friends. I'm going to try to both keep it brief and look at a large number of topics at the same time. And this this is an experiment. What you see in front of you are rare drawings for a book by Carnot being translated into English. This is a preview. Terry Bristol's in charge of that project. He's taken it on. Now Terry is behind the ISEP lectures, and I think I just inadvertently closed that window. ISEPP.org. So this is a lecture series that I've been going to since the 90s, right? So it's one of the longest running um, lecture series in history, I would say quite successful and it helped Portland stay educated. We got a lot of the best minds. Now YouTube is competition for all this because YouTube has amazing lectures on it now too. So it's kind of like the, uh, what do they call it? The shop eclipse, the, the fact that people don't go to malls anymore because of Amazon and stuff. I don't know how true that is because I don't really go to malls much myself. So if there is a big drop off at the mall, don't I don't know that I'd be the one to talk about that. I'm going to transition to mall. Lloyd Center, I talk about in my blog a lot. Nixon, president, vice president at that time, came here to talk to to dedicate the Lloyd Center Mall and he called it America's answer to communism. Now, I don't know to what extent you're going to be wanting to stop and read any of this, but this is a draft of something I'm writing that I don't know if I'll publish, but it relates to an even denser piece of writing that is extremely interesting, though. And I'm going to be, like, recommending it, but I don't know where it is online or if it is online. Like, I'm showing you the text here, but is there a link somewhere I have been looking uh, I do have a bibliographic reference for you. It's the September 1972 Analog Science Fiction and Fact magazine, Ben Bova editor. So it's the Norman Spinrad article. And if I click on that, I get to, what will I get to? All right. So a nice long... Um, biography and or a short biography and then a convenient list of his books and here he's going to visit Buckminster Fuller and interview him and then write about it and it's quite a well-written article for one thing he mirrors like he's our man on the ground who's somewhat skeptical that he's going to be impressed by this Bucky guy and they get into a pretty deep conversation and he's good at relaying it especially the part about narcotic warfare, drug warfare, whatever. Like, I was just a few seconds ago listening to this Tucker Carlson where he's talking about Chinese and narcotics and all this, and here we are in 2019, and here's Bucky back in 1972 talking about drug warfare. It's kind of like a biological warfare, and uh, Spinrad is trying to figure it out. It's funny that his name has got spin in it because it's a lot of spin and Bucky stuff, always is. And then I just wanted to mention Alan Potkin's excellent work, which I've been looking through. I'll be able to put a link to this, I think, in the notes. This is a pretty raw, and it's not highly edited. It's the raw screenshot of what was going on during a talk, a live presentation that he gave about his time in Vietnam as a soldier, but he's also an academic. He's kind of unusual because people in his generation, when they were in academia, it was to not be in the war. And so to be in academia and then go to the war and then go back into academia, he sees two sides more than most people. And he went back to Vietnam after the war to study the ecology and has been doing so ever since. He always had a mind of like chronicling stuff. He wanted to take a movie camera with him to Vietnam, but that was impractical.
So the other thing is I met with Greg today and Terry Bristol, the head of ISEP, right? So ISEP is Wanderers and so on. There's a connection to the Quakers here in Portland and that Doug Strain, who uh, got the Linus Pauling House refurbished and rededicated to the memory of Linus Pauling, also was the man behind the Quaker Meeting House which was a Janssen property. In other words, it was making swimming suits at one point. But Doug Strain's company had it interimly and was actually the company to hand it off to the Quakers. Has to do with his being a conscientious, conscientious objector, Doug Strain was, but also a very su successful industrialist out here in the Silicon Forest. And so American Friends Service Committee which is kind of the Quaker social action arm. We can talk about that in other videos, have done so. Uh, he wanted them to have a headquarters there as long as they needed it. And they needed it until the mid 80s sometime. And then they moved to other digs. So, and the building's been remodeled considerably since then at huge, it's a lot bigger now than it used to be. This is the magazine I used to edit for the American Friends Service Committee. And so Doug Strain, who uh, worked worked with the Quakers on getting them this building, he was also a student of Linus Pauling's at Caltech. And Linus Pauling grew up in this, uh, his boyhood home here is the Linus Pauling House here on Hawthorne. And Doug Strain got that back uh, back online, refurbished, and it became the headquarters for the uh, Memorial Lecture Series that Terry has organized. And Terry is the one who's working on a translation into English of some of... Uh, Carnot's writings. There was a father and a son. Well, this is, I believe, Lazar's work that he's been uh, having translated into English. And we met about that today at the uh, Pauling House, which again was a, a Doug Strain project there for a while. All right, I'll be stopping around here because I said I wanted to keep it brief and you're going to wonder how these things connect. The Vietnam thread, we've been exploring that coming through the uh, much earlier time frame before Nixon and before even Vice President Nixon, we were in the period of um, still working with Ho Chi Minh, right? I talked about the the deer team and stuff. So we're continuing a Vietnam thread if you've been following my channel, but I don't assume that you have been. But we do touch on history, and tonight we looked at Bucky Fuller's um, insights into the drug wars circa 1972. And I'm saying, hey, not everything has changed that much, but we're still here, and the design science revolution wasn't negligible because in those 10 years, we managed to come up with YouTube and stuff. By 10 years, I don't mean any specific time frame, actually. I'm just talking about the open source revolution as somewhat fulfilling Fuller's hopes, but we're still kind of touch and go. It's been a long slog. All right, so I'm going to end it here. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Greg. Still reading through your book. It's interesting. Glad to chat with you today about it and your projects. Talk to you soon.